Sound the battle cry, see the foe is nigh, raise the standard high. Pastor Jason Cooley here with Brother Nate Marino, and we are here with Sound the Battle Cry Radio, and with a special report here, a Pope Watch, and uh, we want to we got to see a good question here in an article by RedIceCreations.com here, and there's an interesting question that is asked, and we'd like the answer to that too. Actually, we already know the answer, and we're going to give you the answer. Why does Freemasonry openly support Pope Francis? Wow. Interesting, isn't it? Very interesting question. I mean, I think we have the answer to that, don't we, Brother Nate? We, yep. we know why, but we'll read through, and you play along with us here till the end, and then we'll, we'll kind of share with you along the way what's going on and why if Pope Francis is openly accepted and supported. All so right. go ahead, Brother Nate. You get us started here. Okay, why does Freemasonry, an organization condemned by the Catholic Church, openly support Pope Francis? Now, to understand everything in this article and in history and everything, you have to understand how the Catholic Church works. There, the Catholic Church always has two policies when it comes to any issue. They have an open but false policy and a true but secret policy. An open they say that they're against abortion. In secret, they're for it. You know how I know they're for it? Because there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of baby skeletons found in catacombs uh, underneath Catholic churches where the nuns would abort the babies uh, or they'd kill the babies that were born from the Catholic priests who had who fornicated with them or raped them, and they put all the babies' bodies down in these catacombs. Right. So we know that they don't care about that no. in reality. It's just to appear conservative. So in an unprecedented development, and for the first time in history, this organization labeled by, pre labeled by previous pontiffs as the Synagogue of Satan is openly welcoming and embracing the Roman Catholic pontiff. Now, if you look in this article, we'll try to put a link in the article to uh, on Sermon Audio and YouTube, so you can look at the picture yourself. But first, we got to hear it's a uh, it's an article from 2013, but it shows a picture, and the headline says, "Grand Lodge of Argentina welcomes the election of Pope Francis." Isn't that something? The Grand Lodge of Freemasonry. For Argentina. Hmm. Now, Pope Francis' election sparked an almost jubilant outpouring of support and welcome from Freemasons around the world. In fact, as reported by a Masonic press agency, several Grand Lodges in Latin America, Europe, and Asia simultaneously welcomed the election of the new Catholic Pope. Unprecedented in the history of the Catholic Church. You do not see... Openly, Freemasons, uh, first of all, taking the side of the Catholic Church, supporting the Catholic Church. In fact, uh, back when I was in Massachusetts, I worked for a company, and the father, the grandfather of the company was a Freemason. And I was kind of asking him some questions about it, and you know what he told me? He said, uh, you can't be a Catholic to join. He said, "You can believe. You have to believe in a God. It doesn't matter what God it is, but you can't be a Catholic." And um, this has been the history of that for a while. There's been this open but false war of between Freemasons and the Catholic Church, but it's yeah. but in reality, at the top levels, they are not against each other. They're all friends. And in fact, ex Jesuit priest Alberto Rivera said. He, he was deep into the Jesuits' high-level stuff. He learned a lot about uh, events in history that nobody knew about. And, but uh, one, Which, one, by the way, which, by the way, are coming to fruition daily. Today. We are watching these things happen. For instance, happen. that train yep. that had gold on it. We should talk that about the Nazis that another had. one, maybe. Yep. But anyways, so what Alberto said was, 
one day he was invited to the special mass. I think it was like a black mass. Yep. And he went to go kiss the black pope's fa- hand, and he had a Masonic ring on. How about that? And it blew his mind because he was taught that whole time that the Masonic order was the enemies of the Catholic Church. And then we also know that uh, Jesuit coadjutor, um, also he taught, it, um, let's see, what's his name, uh, Adam Wyseft. Yep. Uh, he was an Illum- Bavarian Illuminati. Founder of the Bavarian Illuminati. Yep, yep, yep. And they infiltrated the Masonic movement yes. in America. Mm-hmm. And... They were Jesuit trained. I mean, they yep. were they were all working. Adam Weishaupt was a Jesuit. Yep. And and as you go back and you look at the Knights Templar and all those other organizations, as you go back, that aren't they? The, they're the same thing as basically the modern day Masonic Order. Well, the Masonic Order has many things that have references in their rituals and their degrees to the Knights Templar. Right. In fact, they're. Order for the Children is called the Demolay Society. Right, who is after Demolay? Jacques de Molay, who was the Grand Master of the Knights Templar. Right, exactly. Which who was is executed? A mili- who was he? Was executed, and he was a. Uh, uh, it's an. It, it was a military order for the Catholic Church. Right, you know. So, so all <laughs> these, all these connections are all there. But in reality, we'll just tell you up front what we believe and what we've studied throughout history is that the top levels. The, all the Grand Lodges of Freemasonry are controlled by the Jesuit general, the Black Pope. By the, they're controlled by the Jesuits. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is. And now you have the Jesuit Pope yes. in charge. And now these Grand Lodges are openly supporting him. Oops. When have you seen these Grand Lodges supporting past popes in the media openly? Right. You no secretly, not, but openly. Not openly. But now there's a change, and there's a reason for that. Yep. Oh, So in here it says, the Italian Freemasons congratulated him immediately the day after his election. In fact, the Grand Master of the Grand Orient of Italy expressed his joy regarding the election of Pope Francis. On March 14, uh, 2013, the day after the Pope's inauguration, with seemingly uncanny prophetic foresight, Italian Grandmaster of Freemasonry Gustavo Raffi said that nothing will be as it was before. Wow. Why that, did he say that? Hmm. Why don't you read this that yeah. next quote there? With Pope Francis, nothing will be as it was before. It is a clear choice of fraternity for a church of dialogue which is not contaminated by the logic and temptations of temporal power. Whoa, what is he talking about there? Whoa. A man of poor, far away from the curia, fraternity, and the desire to dialogue were his first concrete words. Perhaps nothing in the church will be as it was before. Our hope is that the pontificate of Francis, the Pope, who comes from the end of the world, can mark the return of the church word instead of the church institution, promoting an open dialogue with the contemporary world, with believers and non-believers following the springtime of Vatican II. So what is this Grand Master of Freemasonry talking about? I'll tell you what he's talking about. He's talking about a time of transformation and that that Pope Francis is initiating right now. Pope Francis is bringing changes that no other pope has brought before. And what are these changes? Uh, changes? The, the plan is for the Catholic Church to have a makeover, to put it in one way. Yeah. It's to have a transformation. It's going to transform its image. And its beliefs and everything. And so that, what are these Freemasons saying? They're saying, hey, you're breaking down these walls now yep. so that the we, we Freemasons no longer have to be separated from you. From Mama. And against you. Now we'll come together. Now we'll come together. Freemasons and the Catholic Church And together. what do they want to bring together? They're bringing the man of sin. That's what they want they to bring want, on the What stage. they want to do, though, is... Is the what Albert Pike called the pure doctrine of Lucifer yep. will be brought into open view, and that means all the mystery religions of the world will combine 
with the Catholic Church being the forerunners and the controllers of the whole thing. Yep. The, look at the Freemasons. They have the, the, the mysteries of the mystery religions hidden with all their rituals Secret and degrees word. and their and everything, right? But then at the top, you discover the secrets. Same thing with the Catholic Church. They have that Babylonian, Egyptian mystery religions all within all their symbolism. But you get to the top, it's the same thing. The pure Luciferianism. Yep. And they're all combining together. Yes, they are. And openly admitting it now, too. All right. Now, what do we see about with the Grand Lodge of Argentina? Officially welcomed the election of Pope Francis. So, the, so again, these are grand lodges around the world. Openly. I mean, this is very significant. Yeah, it's very significant. That's right. It is. To, for all these grand lodges to be uh, welcoming and, and praising this. A pope? Hmm. Openly. Yeah, that's right. Well, and I'll tell you, who was it but... Uh, Eric Phelps in Vatican Assassins documents that the that the that uh, some of the rites of Freemasonry in the, that they said the three ruffians were dealing with right right and uh, he talked about that how it was the re- the reformers and it was like or it was like the Pope and anyway basically they say that the that the, the Eric Phelps says that the main person. Um, is actually the Pope in that right. It's not... Hiram Abiff. Yeah, yeah Hiram yeah. Abiff yeah. is actually the Pope. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what he, he says, and he shows, and he gives some reason reasons why. Yeah, that, we'll have to go back and talk, and, and like get all yep, the facts with that yep, story. Yep, yep, we'll get that for you sometime. But anyway, I just thought it was funny because a lot of people don't understand the Jesuit connection with the Masonic Order. No. But you're seeing it now come full circle and things that Alberto and other men like that tried to expose 30 years ago and 40 years ago, but were laughed at, you know, and everybody, Oh, that's not, you said disinfo agent and all this stuff. They tried to say about Alberto. Well, the things that he said came true. I mean, just look at the, the new story that we just did about uh, Jesuit Pope Francis working with Tony Palmer and the Charismatics to end the Protestant Reformation. And he predicted that. And He'd Alberto, said, that Alberto said that the Jesuits used the Charismatic movement to infiltrate Protestantism to bring them into the Catholic Church. And that's yep. exactly what they've done. And they admitted that's what... They admitted it. Tony Palmer stayed an Anglican... Uh, or Episcopalian, whichever one he was, I think Anglican. He stayed that. And he was friends with Pope Francis before he was Pope. He was friends pope. with that Jesuit, and he taught, and he, and he told him what to do. Yeah, I don't think I could be friends with any Jesuit. No. I don't no. think we would like each other. We wouldn't get along too well. No. Wouldn't All right. work. All right, so uh, Argentina, Grand, Lodge of Martina. Grand yep. Master Angel... George Clavero. George Clavero said this, The Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons, an institution rooted in our country since 1857, salutes the naming of our co-patriot, Cardinal George Bergoglio, as Pope Francis, a man of a stour life consecrated to his devotions. The designation of the new pontiff of the Catholic Church supposes a great recognition of the Argentine nation. In the name of all the Grand Lodge of Argentina greets our co-patriot, Cardinal, who just received such a high world distinction. Now we got a picture of this Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons magazine or whatever. Yep. And it says, Welcomes Pope Francis, the Pope of Mercy and Compassion. And it shows a picture of him on the front. It's just, wow, it's amazing. And then it says, yep. The Masons in the Philippines welcome Pope Francis. Wow. So during the January trip, Pope Francis to the Philippines, among the groups who welcomed him was the Grand Lodge of Masons who brought who bought this full page ad yeah. that we're talking about of January of this year. Yeah, yeah, interesting, isn't it? When this? he visited, because he was going to visit the Philippines. So yeah. the synagogue of Satan. So here's some good points here. Yep, it is worth reminding the reader 
or the listener, for the that for the Catholic Church, membership in Freemasonry means automatic excommunication. Yep. That's right. Throughout history, if you were became a member of, of, of Freemasonry, you were excommunicated. Cardinal yeah, look, Ratzinger, yeah, the which former was pope, pope, former Pope Benedict, the one that looks like the evil emperor from Star Wars. Yeah, that guy, yeah. Cardinal Ratzinger, then prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of Faith, on November twenty sixth, nineteen eighty three, emphasized the faithful who enroll in Masonic associations are in a state of grave sin and may not receive Holy Communion. Whoa. Consequently. Neither the excommunication nor the other penalties envisaged have been abrogated. So he said that, 1983. You cannot be a Freemason and be a Catholic. You will not be able to receive communion, and you'll be excommunicated. And that was the open policy. Right. Exactly. That was just to hide the secret but true policy. But now... This is why it's so significant, because now they're openly going against their old policy. Yep, and he said there was a time for change, didn't he? Yeah. Yep, transformation. Numerous popes have condemned Freemasonry throughout the ages. Yeah, really, who cares what they said? They're a bunch of devils. But Pope Leo VIII called Freemasonry, Freemasonry the synagogue of Satan. In his letter to the Italian people dated December 8, 1892, Leo VIII writes, quote, Let us remember that Christianity and Freemasonry are essentially incompatible to such an extent that to become united with one means being divorced from the other. Let us therefore expose Freemasonry as the enemy of God, of the church, and of our motherland. And so, you know, they, they got this, like we said, this is their open but false policy that they held to but now they're changing and the open policy is saying no oh, no all these grand lodges around the world we support pope francis yep we support this pope now why would they support support this pope what is different about this pope than past popes that would make them want to support him he's a jesuit and what is he doing He's he's knocking down every single wall of separation that's there. All of them. Because he has a purpose. And his purpose is to bring everybody back to Rome. Everyone together. So there can be no differences and no distinctions, but everybody is welcome. A big, huge tent that is there. You know, and that's that's what he wants to do. Uh, now, we got an interesting quote here. Uh, I believe this article from Red Eyes Creations, they took it from another website, Veritas, Veritas Vincent, Vincent yep. International, I'm which I think right is now. Catholic. Yep. And they try to pretend like, you know, Catholic Church, the enemy of Freemasonry, and they fight against it and all this garbage. But let me, let's look at an interesting quote here, okay? Which and one, for Pope about, Gregory or which one? No, I'll show you. Okay. One, so they talk about Albert Pike and how Albert Pike uh, you know, talked about Lucifer, which is true. Um, Luc Albert Pike said, Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning. It is, is it he who bears the light of Freemasonry? Doubt, Doubt it, it not. not. He does. So he says, Luc Albert Pike said, Lucifer is the light of Freemasonry, which is the truth. Yep. Uh, but anyways... You know, so this, uh, the ultimate needed documents, chillingly summarized. Okay, so we got a quote here. Is Pope Gregory the, what is that? The 16th. Six, 16th was one of the foremost opponents of Freemasonry, at least openly. Right. They always, see, the Catholic Church always has this, though. They always have this open, Policy. supposed, you know, the enemies. We're against the Freemasons. No, you're not. Just like they said, they're you know they say that we're against the Nazis, but you signed a concordat with the Nazis. Oops, give me a break. So he was the foremost opponent of Freemasonry. Was able to seize documents. Okay, he was supposedly able to seize documents from the Masonic Lodge known as Alta Vendita. The documents were later on published in a book. 
and disseminated through various lectures. The Alta Vendita documents chillingly summarize a plan to infiltrate and destroy the Catholic Church from within, a plan which may even require a century. Now, you could just as easily replace this plan here with the Jesuits, because that's exactly what the Jesuits did. The Jesuits took over the Catholic Church, and they control it to this day. So here's a quote from that document, all right? It says this, Our ultimate end is that of the final destruction of Catholicism, and even of the Christian idea, the Pope, whoever he is, will never come to the secret societies. It is up to the secret societies to take the first step toward the church with the aim of conquering both of them. The task that you are going to undertake is not the work of a day or of a month or of a year. It may last several years, perhaps a century, but in our ranks, the soldier dies and struggle goes on. What we, now listen to this. What we must ask for, what we should look for and wait for as the Jews wait for the Messiah is a pope according to our needs. Wow. To the Freemasons' needs, hmm. what they were saying. Now, then he says, you will contrive for yourselves at little cost a reputation as good Catholics and pure patriots. This reputation will put in access to our doctrines in the midst of, our, of the young clergy, as well as deeply into the monasteries. In a few years, by the force of things, this young clergy will have overrun all the functions. They will form the Sovereign's Council. They will be called to choose a pontiff who should reign. Now, this gets twisted, okay, because I got a whole nother agenda, right? Let's let's take a wild turn right here, and let me throw something at you. Okay. Because there's another agenda going play in play here, okay? And that agenda is something that I'm going to drop a name here, Alex Jones. Yep. Okay? And he's playing into it right now. He's pushing it because he's a stinking phony. Yes, okay? he is. Alex Jones right now on his page, Alex Jones took a trip to Rome. Yep, I okay. saw that. I watched it. And Alex Jones is doing all these videos saying that he's exposing the Catholic Church and, and Rome and the Pope. And he says, is the Pope the devil? And the Pope is a communist and all this other stuff. Now, what? Now, is that good on the one hand? Yes. Expose the Catholic Church. Expose this Pope. He does push communist, poli push communist policies and all this stuff. But yep. what is the lie that he pushes? The lie that he pushes is saying that the Catholic Church used to be different. Right, used to be and they, good. And, and popes in the past have historically spoke against tyran tyranny and other things. And that the Catholic Church has been infiltrated and changed and is controlled by a secret pedophile ring. And that Pope Francis is just this rogue, crazy devil pope. But and, and Which is partly true. Because he is a devil, but what's the lie that the Catholic Church was ever good? Right. And you know what? This is the same. Now, let me tell you something in case you guys didn't know. There is a book. You may have heard of it. It's called Angels and Demons, written by Dan Brown, the same guy that yep. wrote the Da Vinci Code. And in Angels and Demons, what what lie they push in that book? What do they push? In that book, there's a conflict between the Illuminati and the Catholic Church. Uh-huh. And the Illuminati hires an assassin yep. to kill people and then eventually to try to kill the Pope to you know uh for yeah, their right. gains. And they say they act like the Illuminati is the sworn enemy of the Catholic Church. Let me tell you something. What did we just say earlier? Adam Weishaupt, who founded the Bavarian Illuminati, was a Jesuit priest. Right. He was a professor of canon law at Engelstadt University. He was a Jesuit. He never came out of it. No. He, they, he formed, you know why they formed the Illuminati? Because the Jesuit order was just suppressed by, by the, the Catholic Church, That's by the right. Pope. So they went underground, formed the Illuminati for a front organization. Right until the until the Jesuit order was reestablished, and, and that was in Napoleon's time, correct? Yes, that Napoleon they, forced they the used Pope Napoleon to reinstate. He kidnapped the Pope, yes, and took him and made him reinstate the Jesuits. The Jesuit order, yes, right. that's exactly what happened. That's right. 
So to say that the Illuminati is the enemy of the Catholic Church is a lie. It's no. a, it's a total. It's a spy versus spy. You know, backstabbing yep. double agent type of thing here. Right. And so when they pushed that, when Alex Jones and other people pushed that lie and say, "Oh, the Catholic Church was infiltrated." They're saying that it used to be good. Right. When it's been from Satan from the beginning, ever since Constantine. Constantine, Constantine we was go nothing back and but listen a to our Babylonian shows. devil worshiper. Yep, go back and listen to our shows on Constantine. We we cover all that. We prove yeah. to you that Constantine was a devil. The only thing that is happening now is that the Catholic Church's secret but an occultic mystery religion aspect of their religion is coming out into the forefront. And it's being they're transforming the image of the Catholic Church to yep. be in line with the New Age movement and the Freemasons and all the other religions of the world. Everything except Biblical Bible believing right. King James Bible believing Christians who will not compromise will not to the, the apostasy and who will not bow the knee to Antichrist. Right. That's right. That's what it's all about. Yes, it is. It's always been about that. Absolutely. All right, I think that's. I think that's all we yeah, got I for think, now. I think we covered it pretty well there, and you got a little, little mini lesson uh, on Rome and the Jesuits and and just the plan and and, and yep. just just understand. You know, there's just some weird things. I was reading in that article too, brother Nate. There was something weird there. Uh, I mean, the whole thing's weird because Roman Catholicism is nothing more but a big old fat cult. Yep. But uh, you know, in, in, they said in the church approved. Apparitions of Our Lady of La Salette or something like yep. that. Our Lady warns us Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. For now is the time of all times, the end of all ends. The church will be in eclipse. The world will be in dismay. Now is the time. The abyss is opening. Oh, wow. Man. Here is the king of kings of darkness. Here is the beast with his subjects calling himself the savior of the world. And then it says St. Francis of Assisi was given a vision of an end time tribulation period when a false pope would take over the pontificate. Quote, at the time of this tribulation, a man not canonically elected will be raised to the pontificate who by his cunning will endeavor to draw many into error and death. So, wow, you know, they got these, this Catholic Church is prophesying about all this garbage. But, um, you know what's interesting? Here, do you know what the end result is? In the book of Revelation, do you know what the Antichrist does? The Antichrist's goal isn't just to get in power and have the world worship him. That is one major goal, okay? And to persecute the saints of God. But you know what the other goal of the Antichrist is? It's found in Revelation 19.19. 19. You know what happens? It says the Antichrist and his armies gather the kings of the earth and their armies, and you know what they do? They gather themselves together to fight against Jesus Christ when he returns. They will yep. convince people that Jesus Christ is the evil one, they will convince people that the true Jesus Christ is the Antichrist, that he's the evil one that they need to fight against, and that the Antichrist is the true Christ, and everything will be backwards. And so this all ties in with that. That's right, brother. There's so much more to this, and this is just a little snippet on this Pope Watch of what's really going on. There's a bigger picture uh, here that's in play, and you'll hear from us more in the future. Uh, we still have a desire to do a serious series on the Jesuit order and explain all that. We, we're going to pick back up kind of where we left off sometime about the history of the popes and go through there as soon as the Lord leads us to do so. So for Brother Nate Marino, it's Pastor Jason Cooley for Sound the Battle Cry Radio, a ministry of Old Paz Baptist Church in Northfield, Minnesota.